Let's do this one. Hey y'all, it's me, Rodney. Hey guys, it's me, Missy. And it's Friday and we're live and we're gonna be doing some furniture today. And I'm really excited about these pieces because um, they have a really pretty inlay. But we're gonna talk about that. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the inlay and what we're gonna do to it when I get to that point. But the first thing we're gonna do is paint the base of it. You already painted one. Yeah, I got one painted and it's behind me, so it's drying. We are gonna distress it, so we're kind of doing that Martha Stewart thing where we got one and one, one done. Yeah, like another gonna, one half done. Yeah, we're gonna go back and forth between the two, so I can show you because there's no way I could get all both done and everything. So that's what we're working with. But I was excited about these because they are a set, and it's, you don't always get two. Yep. So sometimes you have to marry a pair, but I didn't have to marry this. They came in together. So, and they're in really good shape. All Rodney had to do was um, add some wood glue to secure these parts right here. And then the tops is what had the most damage on it, but the inlay in them was so pretty and we were trying to save as much of it as we could, but we'll get to the inlay when we get to that part. So today we're going to paint these tables in a color that um, is also new to me. I've not painted in sea glass before. Nope. But it's a really pretty light uh, color. What would you call it? Like it's a light, light green. It's like a yeah. It's a very light green with a lot of uh, I'd say a mix of blue in with it. Yeah. So S Sandy said hello from Texas. Cat said hey. Hi everybody. Margie said hey, Missy and Rodney. Hi. Cat said love the haircut. Thank and you. And Karen said hi. Hi. So, um, we... Tina said good morning. Good morning. We scuff sanded these up um, and sanded... That's my water. My brush is too watery. Um, it's okay, though. We scuff sanded these up and cleaned them really good with some uh, Dixie Bell White Lightning. But can you see how, how much water my brush had in it? Rebecca says she got her papers. They are absolutely gorgeous. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah, there was a huge delay apparently on all those papers. Yeah. Because I looked at the date that I mailed them out versus the date that everybody was getting them, and it was uh, quite a bit of time. Oh, my brush had way too much water in it. I had my brush sitting in a cup of water so it wouldn't dry out, but I didn't have that much water in the cup, but apparently my brush was absorbing it. Oh yeah, you can't leave it sitting down in the water. Yeah. That's for doggone sure. So when you have too much water, and you, um, like if you spray too much water, which I didn't have to spray because my brush was fully water, um, and it's watery like that, you just add more paint. Rebecca said, I also finally completed my cutting board project from last year. Okay. And the instructions were spot on. I love that we can go back and review that stuff. <sighs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, most definitely left that up there for permanency. Yeah. This is a really pretty color. Donna said hello from Missouri. Hi, Donna. Margie said it slurped it up, huh? It did. It did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Because I'm looking at it running down onto it the drop cloth. Running. I'm glad I got a drop cloth. I think I am going to lightly distress these tables. Um, because there is a lot of detail. And then when I go to paint it, it kind of... It doesn't hide it, but it does not make it stand out as much. And I think that these tables are really fancy for... Um, I don't know. I think they're just, they have a lot of character to yeah. them. And I think I would like to showcase that character. Um, yeah, like the diamonding and the yeah, uh, trim. Because like the paint just kind of hides it. Which if we had a darker glaze, we could, not not black, but like grunge gray. But I'm afraid that that would mute the I think the so out. to mute the gray. So anytime that I ever do... Oh, let me not knock stuff over. 
anytime that I ever uh, decide to paint um, a piece of furniture and I'm trying to decide what color to paint it, um, I always just get on Google and I just uh, type in like Dixie Bell Steel Glass is what I typed in. And then it'll bring up so much furniture pieces um, that are in that color. And it got it just gives you like inspiration, like the chances of you finding your exact furniture, you know, you're probably not going to. Uh, but it does give you, I gotta get situated. It does give you um, inspiration for how you wanna do it. So a lot, I've seen a lot of, well, two different ways really of how they did painted with these col this color and a lot of them did um, dark wax them. And I do like dark wax, but I kept on going back to the top of the table and the inlay and how I was going to work with that and not lose it because if I paint over the whole, if I paint the whole entire table, I'll paint the inlay and then you won't see it. Like it, it won't be a, a thing. That's a question that Sa Sandy just asked. What is your idea for the tops? So I sanded them down and be these are real wood um, tables, but the inlay on these is a veneer. So it's very thin. So the damage that was on the tops of these tables, um, they were pretty deep around the sides. You got a paint run on this backside on that leg. At the top. There you go, you got it. Um, so the, okay, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> the inlet, oh, what was I saying? The damage on the tops of the tables yep. were pretty deep on the sides. So when we went to sand those down to try to get the damage off, that's when we found out how thin the veneer inlay is on top because I sanded down is which when we get to the top I'll show you exactly how that looks as far as like when you sand too far and then you sand away the veneer inlay it doesn't if you were going to stain it it would show like yeah it, it wouldn't have an even the, coat of, of stain yeah. it wouldn't look right so we're going to do, I have them taped off and I'll show, when I put them side by side and show you the inlay, um, what we're going to do is kind of like do a paint wash on them instead of staining them because you would have to stain, then you have to wait and let it dry. And that usually takes 12 hours for stain to fully cure up. And I just don't want to wait 12 hours, but you can, if you, you know, do something like this, you can wait 12 hours if you want to be patient. I don't want to be patient today. <laughs> Margie said, very nice looking tables. They are very pretty. I really like um, all the detail of them. And I like how they, um, I like the shape of them. I like the height of them. They have a really good height. And they were really, I mean, they were in really good shape other than you know, just your casual wear and tear on the top where, you know, stuff gets put. Oh, don't lose it. This is the leg that my paintbrush was really watery in. Nancy said, lucky you, my knees won't let me do that. <laughs> Sometimes my knees don't let me do this either. <laughs> Tina said, hers won't let her do it either. It'll take her forever to get back up off the floor. Um, This one, when I painted it, I painted it on the counter. <laughs> the only reason why I'm painting it on the floor is because of the live. Otherwise, these jokers would have been up on the counter because it's just easier. Or if I was, um, if I had a pop-up table, which you know what, I should bring a pop-up table home. You know? Yeah, you should actually. I actually should. I don't know why I haven't thought of that before. Because right now we're not using them, so they're all mm -hmm. just stored in the back against the refrigerator. Yeah. Normally, I do not paint on the floor like this unless it's something big like a dresser. Then we or, still try to set, even with those, we try to set them. If we're doing them at the store, we set them up on a rolling mm -hmm. cart. We that have way a work she doesn't table. have to get down as far. Yeah. It's going to dry darker, just like the one on the left, Nancy. Yeah, can you see it a little bit darker yeah. over here? Yeah. Uh, 
Margie, that color is going to be sea glass. This is the first time we've used it. Yeah. Uh, Karen said, don't, oh, don't forget to like the video. Thank you, And Sandy you, said, yep, save your knees. Yeah, Missy has a little yeah. detailer's cart that she'll sit on and kind of roll around the furniture when it's low like that yeah. at the store. But yeah, we always set them up on these carts. Uh, I have a custom built one that is a little taller than a standard furniture dolly. Right. And then she'll use it or we'll leave it on top of our big push carts. Yeah. And we have that table that has a... Yeah, when it dries that shift. darker color, it's most definitely beautiful. Because right now it is looking really light. If you like... Um, yeah, and that's got two coats on it, so... When I flip to that table, we'll be able to distress it and let some of this natural wood come through on these details. And Because, um, yeah, on camera, that one is way darker, the one back there. I just really wanted to show y'all the painting process on this one because lighter colors and darker colors are, you know, they just paint just a little bit different. Um, this paint is thick, but... Um, It's not too bad. Bobby said, I have some old end tables that were left here in the house when I purchased it. I'm getting ideas for them now. Yes. Yes. Donna said, my back wouldn't allow me to do that. Two back <laughs> surgeries and old bones. Ooh. I have to be careful with mine sometimes. Let me get situated. Yeah, definitely Make it as easy as possible on yourself when you're talking about paint and furniture like this. Um, I even looked at getting one of those scissor carts that you just use a thing and you twirl it and it raises the cart up and down. The good thing about chalk paint is that like on your counters, on your floors, if you do get any on it, you know, it's really easy to clean up with water. So don't stress about that. I can promise you as much furniture as I've painted in this house and had it all over the floor and all over the counter, it comes up. Natalie just created a, a, a great thing right here. She said, good morning, Rodney and Missy. Hey, Rustikits, <sighs> love the paint color today. Yeah, I like that. A sea glass is a pretty color, sea and it and it will darken as it dries because mm -hmm. it does. When Nancy pointed it out, it is a lot different while it's still wet. Mm -hmm. Not all colors do that, and second coat really does make a difference too, as far as the color. It it just deepens it, of course. And then I'm and then also your brush is extra wet. Yeah. So this one is more like a, a little bit watered down in some places. But it's going on so smooth. And you said you did that because you saw somebody so, on YouTube. So, yeah, it. so there's on the Dixie Bell um, thing, one of the painter girls, she keeps a paintbrush of water, a cup of water, and she'll randomly dip her brush in it. Instead of, I mean, she uses the mister, but instead of using the mister, um, she does that to help keep a smoother paint job. So I was kind of like really curious about it. And that's kind of where I make like a little bit experimenting with it. I will say that it does. Um, it's a lot more splashier because you've already got several drops of it on your uh, pants. Yeah, that's okay. That you didn't get earlier. <laughs> Right. It does uh, definitely thins your paint out for sure, more so than the mister. But it is going on pretty smooth, but I think you have to be more aware of like runs. Yeah, that's the problem with going too thin on your paint. Yeah, versus if you were to just use the continuous mister. Tina said, I have a six by five craft table that I build and paint all my stuff on. Mm-hmm. We had, we had, we used to when we built front I actually built furniture. We had a, a table that was it was five. I had it set where it was five foot four inches high. All, that way, I was always building off the ground because anytime you try to build something on the ground, it's 
it gets hard for me to maneuver around. It's always easier when it's eye level too. And then you can put it on a lazy Susan and just spin it. Mm -hmm. and keep building. Karen said that's a great color. I like this color too. It definitely brightens up. It doesn't make the table so heavy. It, it lightens them up. I think this is a good color if you like that, um, that cottage look. Um, yeah, it's very pastel. Mm hmm I do think. If you if you, if that's your decor style or whatever, or it would pair really well with any kind of tans, grays, anything like that as far as like wall color or other furniture color. It would look really good. Yeah, I don't know if I would want to have mine so watered down yeah it's a, it's just a little bit watery because it is it's getting all over your clothes yeah it's right here and on your left leg too that's probably old paint <laughs> okay let me see if i got it i'll cover it up that right there the back side of that one leg too That's always hard when you're painting stuff like this is getting behind it because sometimes you'll get done painting and you'll realize, oh, I forgot to paint the back side of that leg, which that's actually happened in one video. Yeah. When you were, uh, what was it we were doing that day? I can't remember, but also when you're painting a darker, a lighter color over a darker color, it, it can be a little bit nerve wracking because of the color bleeding back the color through. color bleeding back through and, and stuff like that, so. Don't be discouraged, though. Trust the process. Trust the process. That's what everybody says. Trust the process. Yeah. So, we're going to let this piece right here dry. Um, because it'll need a second coat, for sure. And then... But the inlay on this one is already done. So I'm going to show y'all the inlay on both tables. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as far as like what it looks like when you stand too far down. It's which you might know, but we'll see. Is it like patina color? Looks like it from here. I do like it. Uh, um, yes, in a way. It looks like, you know, how uh, copper gets that look. Oh, that, maybe just that, not as rich Yeah. as a patina color. Because so that's wet, that's dry. Uh, you know, it, um, it, it, is, could, it is a lot lighter because it's, it could, because it's still wet. Yeah, you could almost, with it being dry, um, it's not quite J-Dot, but a little bit J-Dot, like a bluish green, you know, like a light milky J-Dot. Mm-hmm. If you had um, mixed in a little bit, yeah, you'd have you to could add a make it yeah. green to it. Okay, so can you see my inlay? Okay, we'll have to switch screens overhead. All right, there we go. Tilt it towards the camera some so they can see it. There we go. Okay, so here's my inlay. Um, and this one wasn't near as bad as the other one, but you can kind of see a little bit. If you see these lighter edges right here um, around the sides and right here, that is where the veneer was sanded off so this is all veneer that is on top of this table and i do have it taped off um because let me grab the other one because this one doesn't have it tina she did do two coats on that one this one has two coats the body of this one has two coats the top i haven't done yet okay so you can see i have them both taped off this one is just sanded and so this is the natural color of it and a good way to tell what if you were just to steal up raw wood. You'll need to move that other one to the behind, that one a little bit and then move that one back. There you go. Okay, if you were going to seal this up with just a clear coat or a wax, a good way to tell of what that will look like um, is to just take a wet rag and wipe, off, wipe it off. And then you'll see this wood right here is very red. And I really don't want the red with this um, sea glass color. 
but this one had a lot more damage to it than this one did. Um, and you can see right here, like that's just the veneer is completely sanded off. So if I was to come through and stain it with some of that no pain gel stain, this right here is this, it's going to look different. Like this would be on purpose to look different because of the inlay and the different woods and it would be gorgeous. But this right here is just still going to show no matter what stain I put on it or how I stain it. But this was so pretty that I didn't want to paint the whole entire top and cover that up because paint is not going to let this stand out. So what I did, because it has a box, the inlay is in a box. What I did was take um, painter's tape and I taped my box out. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint wash this so that way it's lighter like this and looks more like closer to driftwood, especially with this color paint. I think it'll match up really good. And then we're going to take the chalk paint sea glass and we're going to paint this side the outside of the box so paint wash here this one's already paint washed so you can see the difference in the color of the wood but the inlay still stands out and then we'll seal that up and then we'll paint this outside with the sea glass margie said that inlay in the middle is very pretty the inlay is very pretty and that's why i didn't want to lose it um sandy said that's a great idea so you can use different colors. Um, I just grabbed cobblestone. Um, a sandbar would have been really good. A Cobblest burlap. Cobblestone matches the outside color of the rim. I the think best. so too. And then when I go to distress this, I think that the woods will look okay um, together. So to do the paint wash technique, this is what I did. I just have a cup of water and a paintbrush. I need to grab my paper towels. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of the paint just to give me the paint wash. And I might have to add a little bit more because of my water, yeah. Oh. Let me get my paper towels. Yep. That's going to look pretty cool. I like the way that the other top ended up looking. Yeah, with the paint wash So I want to see yeah. how you do this one. Okay. To so, try to make it similar. Yeah. I need a little bit more paint. How much water did you add? I had more water than what I thought. Nancy said, remember to hit that thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. So how about what what consistency are you looking for? If with you it? can just do almost like 50-50, I think you would be all right. I'm just wanting to see if it's yeah, I'm just wanting to stir the water up into it. Okay, so here's what I did. And I still didn't grab my paper towels, I just grabbed the one. Nancy says she shared you on her Facebook. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, I have it taped off, is which on this one, the whole entire thing is um, done. I just wanted to see how the pink wash would look on the top of the sanded inlay. I, I knew that it wasn't going to cover it, but, you know, I still needed to see. <laughs> that was just me. Um, but for this piece, we're just not going to worry about going all the way to the edges. We're just going to worry about the center part. And all I do is just paint it on like that. You can see that it's very watery. It's very thin. So it's like almost soaking the wood. Because that's essentially what you want it to do. You want the pigment to soak into the wood a little bit. So even this watered down chalk paint, you can see it immediately covers up the inlay. So you lose all of that um detail there and 
I'm going to set that to the side. Don't let that fall over. And then we're just going to take, you can use um, an old t-shirt or old rag. I'm just going to use a paper towel. And I'm just going to light pressure, wipe it back. And then I try to go like in the same direction as far as like not going back and forth like that. Just so you're trying to make it look even. Yeah. Are you going to try to lift more paint off of it? Well, that's kind of what I did with that one. I just kept on wiping it, you know? Right. Do you need to add but I was water just, to the surface, maybe? No. It, but it's also wet. That's completely dry. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I did two coats on that one, actually. And I didn't need to, but. Yeah, because that one, I mean, as thick as that coat was when you put it on, as thick as the color yeah, is now. Yeah, it was the same way with that one. I'll, and I did the same thing. I just poured a little bit of water in a bowl and um, a little bit of paint. But it, it takes down the red. Donna said, that is such a great technique. Yeah, it just. I think you got it about even with the other one I now. I think so too. Once it dries, you'll be able to tell. I think so. Let me um, put the lid on this paint so it doesn't dry out. Because the be other one is really, sad. really even toned all the way across. Yeah, because on that one, I I did the whole entire thing. Right. But then I, I realized, you know, there was no need to do the whole entire thing because we're going to paint this off anyway. Right, that's why you take the inside like right. you did. So on this one, we're, I, all, I did this one first and then I had it taped off like, well, no. This one, I did the whole entire thing. Then it dried. And then I came through and I taped that out. I would be taped on the inside of the inlay. Yeah. Right? Because there's a dark line, a light line, and then a dark line. So I took my tape all the way to that last dark line. So that I'm not going to paint. This right. I am. So when that's dry, I can peel this tape off. Is it, well, I should be able to pull it off now, don't you think? Yeah. Um. Because as thin as that is, that should dry in like yeah. seconds. So you just, so you taped off a bigger area than what you needed to, essentially. I taped on the last line of this one. In, instead of on the inside, and which on is this where one, you're going to paint it, it to. Yeah, this I'm going to paint. So I tape from here like that. Oh, okay, I got you. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I'm seeing it wrong. Yeah. So I understand all I'm doing... now. So when you paint it, when you go back in with your your painter's tape, you're going to paint off to the la to the line that touches where the yeah. Dark... So for to do finish this one off, I would let this dry and then tape on the inside. Right, I got you. And then paint this. Yep. If you can use an old T-shirt or something like that to wipe off um, the paint wash is actually a little bit better than a paper towel because paper towel can leave lint and stuff like that. Um, Unless you're using a uh, Viva. Right. So just if you can um, have an old rag or a t-shirt, anything that has, that has, that won't. Margie said, great job. Thank you. I think that was the best way I could figure out how to stay the inlay without, ugh painting over it it would have just made me sad to paint over it yeah we were trying to figure out how we could stain it and keep that that beautiful shadowed look that it had right. but if we would have stained it That's you would have saw that ugliness around the edges because like she said earlier it won't take stain the same way right because it's going to be a uh 
different wood totally underneath that beautiful veneer. The veneer. And those really thin veneers like that, you'll sand through those in seconds. It with doesn't. Even hand sanding. Yeah, it doesn't take long to sand through the veneer. Um, and then by the time you've realized you've done it, ugh, it's too late. <laughs> you can't take it. You can't put it back. Um, and on this piece, you really couldn't tell if it was how thin the veneer was. Some pieces you can tell how thin the veneer is, like on a dresser. If you can look behind the back side of the dresser, you can see kind of. Um, if it has a thin veneer or not. You all, the old dog is coming. <laughs> uh, Margie, yes, that's called, that's a, in the middle, that middle portion is a, uh, veneer inlay what the be easiest way to describe how to do an inlay would be to cut each piece fit it together and then uh glue it in and then cut it doing inlays is, is is really to me doing inlays is difficult uh, i've done a few in the past when building furniture not a huge consuming. fan of it because it is very time consuming very time i'd rather consuming. route an edge into something and then pour epoxy and the colored epoxy into it than do that because it's much easier no problem but yeah doing inlays most definitely some can be some difficult work when you, if you tape down if you can just make sure your edges are taped all the way down that will help a lot with the um with the tam said inlay is like paper piercing oh okay <laughs> oh, something went wrong. if you can make sure your edges are taped down really good and even and even then you can um avoid the bleed through that can come and I always take my tape off as soon as I can. For this piece that I've heard today, I'm not going to be able to take it off right now because it's going to need two coats. And now there's no way, there's no way I could keep a straight line like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to have you to You might be able to do it, it one time, but doing it twice yeah, is kind of difficult. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that twice like that. And then, so you might be concerned about the paint being a little taller when she pulls the tape up. In order to avoid that, that whole situation would be to put your clear coat on it. And then that should, uh, since it's self-leveling, the clear coat will even all that out. Right. Because that's always a concern. Like if you, if you paint a car with urethane, it's going to leave a little bit thicker surface. And when you go to clear coat over that, it's still going to leave that lump. So you have to go back in and, and sand the clear coat smooth. It's it's a big process, but it's fun and it makes it look better. But with furniture and self-leveling paints, you just lay it down over top of it and it's good to go. It would have, um, this will just have a very slight, but it might not be so bad though because of where the inlay is. Like, no, once you once you apply the clear coat, yeah, it will level itself out and there won't be a divot. Right. Kind of like when we painted Emily's room and oh, it had that yeah, stripe yeah, yeah. and you could feel the difference. Right. You won't be able to do that once you put the clear coat on there. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Sandy said that's beautiful. I think it's going to look good. I think it's definitely going to. Donna said um, it's just like magic when you put the paint on. Magic Missy. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely changes it up. It definitely lightens these tables up. They're definitely not as heavy as they were. Rebecca's and coming like to Alabama it. in June. In June? Yep. So is Tam. Yes. For Craft Acropolis. Yep. I painted... Um, when I say this is the first time I've used it, it's not the first time I used this paint yesterday. Um, to kind of get a feel for if I yeah. liked it or not. Well, what did you paint yesterday with um, that? I painted the bottom. Okay, so I have a I had a kitchen table and I sanded down the top of the kitchen table down to the bare oh, raw yeah, wood. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. 
and then I just scuff sand and cleaned the bottom of the kitchen table. Um, and I painted the legs this color. And I thought it was really fun. It's really pretty. And I have some ladder back um, kitchen chairs that need a table. And that table is the perfect um, style for right. um, those kind of chairs. It's not, it's farmhouse, but um, it's just a basic round table and yeah. it has it could have had a leaf but it, the, when I got the table it didn't have a leaf so but it has the two drop down sides so it'll be good for the four ladder bag chairs Kat said Missy the Magician <laughs> and Lisa said that that color is so beautiful you're doing an amazing job It look, this color looks really good with um, dark walnut because yeah. that's what color I stained the um, top of the kitchen table. And it's a it's an old one. And I sanded it down and got as much of the um, stuff out of it. But I need to um, let this keep on drying. Because now I'm just moving paint with paint. Right. So I'm going to pull this one back over here. And I'm going to I have you on one. both screens. Yeah, I'm going to set that to the side. And I'm going to pull this one back over here. Ooh. So, I'm just going to keep on letting this dry just a little bit. But what we are going to do is I'm going to use a sanding sponge. And we're going to do, we're going to distress a little bit. I just want to see, can they see it really good? Look at how the detail shows now. You see it? Not really. If you can't see that. I can't see it, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Lisa says she can see it. Thank you. Oh, well, you got to think. I'm looking at it at an angle. They're looking at it straight on because they got two cameras to be used. I like that. I have this one too. It's um the kind that you can get at Walmart. What are these called? A uh, gator. A Gator is the company. So I have the, we get these. Sponges. Yeah, they're just sand and sponges. We get these at Walmart. But 3M makes the best ones. Yeah, I like these. Um, I like them because of the sides. So when there's like detail like this around, it helps you um, to get in that area because you can use the side versus a sponge. But I like the sponge because. You can distress the whole entire thing without having to take any of the paint off. And it gives you a nice, smooth finish before you go to seal it up. Yeah, I like just the slight distressing of it. I think that looks really good. I was trying to get it to where they could see it. Which one you want to go to? No, the I was talking about the table. But it's failing to connect remotely. Yeah, other people are having trouble seeing it too. Okay, so what you want me to do? I'm gonna move the camera.
seems to be a good meal. I mean, it's hard to tell. Like, I can't see it unless I zoom in on the the video screen, on the YouTube screen itself. You can see it lightly. But other than that. Are you on this one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You can see it's just light distressing. Oh, I hit the mic. Let me go to the side. You see it? Yeah. Well, I, I got to Let me try to lock the zoom so it doesn't zoom out and in every time you move your arm. Move your hand out of the view. There we go. All right, it's locked. Okay, so this is no sanding, and this is just a sanding sponge. And now you can see the detail. It brings back those diamonds. And then this is the gator sponge, is which it's just, um, this one's fine. So it's not too coarse or anything like that. And I'm just hitting corners where they would naturally be distressed, but I'm sanding the whole thing so that way it's nice and smooth. So when I go to seal this up, the paint will feel nice and smooth. It's the same thing here. If you wax over it, the detail will come out more, right? Yeah, it because it'll hydrate the wood that's showing. So it'll just, um, it'll just, it'll hydrate that back up from where we've sanded it and everything. And then it'll just make it look a little bit richer. Yeah, because like, right, from what we're seeing and what I'm seeing, there's, there's, you can't tell. You can't tell. You can't tell that you're doing anything to oh, it. Oh, that's just a shame because it is, it is. Like, I can't see it from right here. It's almost like you're sanding it with a fine sandpaper and accomplishing. Well, no I am using, at all. I am using fine, but it is not, um, it is, it's not a heavy distressing, but it's not, um, I'm just hitting up the corners. If you were here in person, you would see it just fine. <laughs> I didn't want to do a heavy distressing. I just wanted it to be fine because it's just bringing out those details and then it's just around the edges where it would naturally get wear and tear at. You know what I'm saying? That's where it would get the natural wear and tear. But I'm sanding the whole entire thing just to give it the smooth finish. So both pieces that I'm sanding with are not, um, oh, we forgot to glue that one. Uh -uh. I didn't forget to glue any of them. 
did it break the? No, no. it's gl the glue stuck on that one, but it didn't stick on the inside of this. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, easy fix. <laughs> Just adding glue. Sandy said, "Be right there," because he said, "If you were here, if you were here, you could see it. I'm if you right could here, just... and I can't see it. I, I'm not going off your eyes. Oh, because I got man eyes. Yeah, you have man eyes. You're not going to be able to see it. If I hold this table up to I that camera, you can see it. Well, hold it closer. Which one? Which camera? Any of them. I'll move the camera to whichever one." T Tina said, do you have room for 22 people in there? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Hold better... on, I saw, I could see one on the screen just then. It was at the very corner of one of the legs. A small spot. There you go. Which camera? Are you on this camera? Yeah, I'm on that camera. I can't see nothing. Can I go up? Yeah, go up. You can go up all you want. Well, I can't move it and hold the table. Go to this camera. You're going to have to get it closer. It's picking up your hand. So it's blurry. So aggravating. Sandy says she can see it. Thank Tina you, says Sandy. that's pretty. Margie said man eyes. That's man funny. eyes is what it is for sure. When I get these tables done, I'll post them on, on Facebook. And you'll be, I'll make sure that you can see the distress and detail of it because it's, it's there. It is lightly distressed. I it is see not it. heavy. I can see it in a few spots. But I didn't want it to be heavy. Like I said. Right. It's a really pretty color. Really pretty color. And this is just a dry trip brush. All I'm doing is just pushing the sand and dust off of it. Well, really, you should just be wiping it off with a damp rag. Yeah, I should. Okay. Margie said she could see it. She really liked it. I like it, too. It's really pretty. I like it. Don't use a, a brush to brush it off, brush sand and dust off with indoors, guys. If you're going to do that, make sure you use a damp rag. A damp rag is better. That way you're not getting sand and dust everywhere. Jennifer said, oh, I agree. That is a really pretty color. I think it's really pretty. Are you going back to that one? Yeah, I'm going to move it so they can see exactly what you're doing. So I'm just using painter's tape. And I'm going to line up where my wash was. Is which is really easy because you can see the definite line. Of where it was at. And I try to keep the edge of my tape straight. Tina says she found our Facebook page and followed Tina Adams. Oh, okay, okay. I was like... I thought Tina was already on our Facebook. <laughs> I gotta start saying last names too. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Also, it kind of helped when I turned my view into 1080p. It's one of default to 720. Tina said, yeah, you have two Tinas now. I have two Tinas. <laughs> Tina Montville said that. There we go. There you go. I have two Tinas. T 
Tina Adams said lol. <laughs> So taping can be tricky sometimes. It can be. But it's doable. Especially when you have a nice line to go off of. So let me grab a razor blade. Well, one reason why we're wobbling right now is because it's sitting on the uh, drop cloth and the drop cloth's all bunched oh, up Oh, and it. this table has those things that go on the bottom of it, but I took those off when I was sanding because I didn't want to mess them right. up, and that's why I didn't put it, and I just haven't put them back on. I always put, um, I'm not going deep because I'm not trying to go into the wood. I'm just trying to get my painter's tape. Donna? Uh, there we go. The best way to to deal with chair if it's if your chair legs are stable, like when you pull on them left and right, if they're stable, then if it's wobbling like because it's uneven on the floor, those uh here these things uh, felt pads they work wonders. You can get them at Walmart. They're pretty. They're I mean, we go. Th we use these a lot because we can also just push our stuff around without it messing up the floor. But it's pretty good at leveling or keeping your chair from from wobbling around on the ground like that. Now, if it's just totally out of balance, you would want to use uh, chair levelers, right? Which they're a bolt thing that goes up inside your. You'd have to drill a hole in the bottom. But if it's just from being loose, all you got to do is. Kind of pull those joints out a little bit, sprinkle some glue around the inside, and then push the legs back together, and then tape them with some blue tape, painter's tape, to uh, keep them pulled. Or if you have a ratchet strap, you can use those. I use bar clamps because I have them outside. Margie, our Facebook page is uh, just at Rusty Relics. Yep. And we post, um, we have over 70 vendors in the store. And we just post um, all sorts of things that they bring in and stuff like that. Um, and if you <coughs> ever see anything that you're interested in, you can always message us and we can ship. We just, um, we just have to figure out what your shipping cost would be. So that's, that's we don't put... Um, anything of our vendors really online because of it just being too complicated to keep up with but we do post it on our facebook page so yeah and we can ship most items as long as it fits in a box and i did just restock the boutique so if you're interested in anything that you see online in the boutique or in, on Facebook in the boutique, you can always message us and tell us your size, and I can tell you if I have it in stock, um, and we can ship it there. It's we try to run the boutique online and in store, but the inventory is the problem as far as like some things. It's just hard to carry two inventories like that, and we can't combine them together because our in-store traffic is pretty decent. It's really, you know, I would say it's high, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, when it comes to the boutique stuff, yeah. Yeah, so I can post a picture of something, and it can sell within 15, you know, 20 minutes of me posting it. And it could be just simply because somebody will call the store and then pay for it and then come and pick it up or somebody in the store actually will put it in their buggy after I post it. <laughs> and that has happened so many times. Like I'll go through and take pictures and then within 20 minutes, I'll be back at the register and then that said item that I just posted on the internet is gone. <laughs> it's, it's in the checkout line. So it just happens. It's not a bad problem to have. Donna said, I saw some pretty tops on the website. We do have a few. We have a few on our website at rustyrelics.com. 
the more popular ones and the easier ones for us to get. Yeah. Because sometimes stock is limited. Um, I don't know if you said that already. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, that's why it's hard to carry both. It's hard to carry. It's expensive to run two inventories. It's very expensive to run two inventories. Very, very expensive. Um, and one doesn't move as fast as the other. Right. We used to have a lot of stuff on there. And then one day, uh, we broke all those boxes out. Some of y'all may remember the day. We had to right. break. We brought all of our online inventory out, and it, we've never been able to recover from that. Honestly, that's yeah, that's it. If you ever chalk paint furniture and you feel that um, after you put your second coat on in that grit, you can get rid of that easily with just using a very fine sandpaper. And honestly, after you let it sit for a couple of days, I mean that this paint is hard hard without even having to seal it it is hard but always i like to try to wait um I, I always like to wait the next day before i seal it so like i would push these to the side and then tomorrow i'll seal them up and everything and they would be good to go i do want to clear coat the top i don't care if i'm about clear coating the whole entire thing because it has so much detail and it could get in here and just say I don't catch it and there's like a run or a glob. Right. Um, even though Dixie Bell's clear coat will not yellow like polyurethane um, if you let it glob up like that. It, it will, It yeah. will yellow. So the fix to that if you ever have that issue with the clear coat is if you've left a glob or just a drip from painting or whatever, um, all you have to do is just go over it with the paint and then reseal it again with the um, clear coat and a very light touch so that way it, it takes that yellow glob away from yep. it. And don't don't be scared to lightly sand your, your clear right. coat because you can use a polishing compound and the, polish it right back to... You could take a flat clear coat and polish it to gloss if you work on it enough. What I'll do is I will flat the top and then wax the bottom but there won't be a difference in the sheen because the flat the clear coat in flat is actual flat. Like once it dries, it's dry. And just like wax in this, once the wax is cure, it's right. cure. So there won't be a difference in the sheen um, as far as that goes. But this, because this is being rolled with, with just a little bit of the... Um, you don't want to you don't want a chance at getting ruined. Yeah, you don't want to. And I'm going to recommend every single time you do a piece of furniture to clear coat your top, regardless. Right. Just to be safe. If, if somebody sets all, a cup of water up there, yeah. you don't want it getting water rings all over it. If that's all you do is clear coat your top, you know, and not too much worry about because the base, um, clear coating the base that you will protect your furniture. Remember how on varnish back in the day you would set there were two reasons why this would occur. You would set a drink up there and then a water ring would form on your furniture. There's two reasons for that. One, varnish wasn't very hard like the new polyurethanes and polycrylics. Uh, Dixie Bell's clear coat's a type of polycrylic. And the second is pledge. To me, pledge is your is is your is your worst nightmare for stuff like that. Did I just strip on that? Yeah, you did mm -hmm. on your main paint job. Let me see. That would have been the smartest thing to do would have been to... Not be holding a cup over the top yeah. of it. But yeah, Pledge. Pledge is brutal. When it comes to stuff like water rings. If you want, if you know you'll be using the table all the time, would you put layers of polyurethane on it? Yeah, so like our kitchen table, it probably has about eight coats of polyurethane on it. And because yellowing wasn't a concern of mine and I used a water-based poly, so it was less concerning, and we had dark walnut. But I, what I wanted to do was we painted it matte. I like and that. And then I sanded it matte, and then I polished it with a polish until it's semi-gloss. But, yeah, it's 
eight coats, right? Yeah, it would be eight coats and then sanded in between each coat. Can they see that really good? Yeah, you can see it really, really good, actually. <laughs> that review is beautiful. Yeah. And it, so it saves my inlay, but I feel like um, using the cobblestone to just wash this down and tone down that red looks really good. Well, it gives everything kind of an even tone. I like it a lot. It looks really good. Oh, you I did like a great it job. a lot, too. All right, here we go. Karen said, gorgeous. Margie said, that's beautiful. Tina Adams said, beautiful tables. Oh, I think so, too. Bonnie I love said, the height love of it. them. Yeah. Love it. I'm happy with them. So, yeah, now you just need to... So Throw a to, clear coat over the top yeah. of it and wax the bottom half. And, or you can clear coat the whole thing like Missy was saying earlier. Yeah, I'll just clear coat the top of the table. I won't clear coat the, the legs or anything like that be, because you have all of this detail right here. And it was so easy for clear coat to just pull up right there and not catch it. You right. know. So this needs a second coat and then a light distress in the you top of this needs a second coat. And then um, I will go through and distress lightly around the corners right here um, just because, you know, it'll match up. And then seal it all up with a clear coat here. And then I'll wax the bottom of it and then let it go. So Karen, if you're concerned about water rings or somebody setting stuff up there, putting wax on the top is not a good, is not as is not a, 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 a good option. But if it's just gonna be used on the side and you don't have never have to worry about somebody setting something on top of it, then most definitely wax will be just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I use wax for a lot of furniture. Um, but for something like this, like obviously kitchen tables and tables like this, I prefer to And the tops to use. of dressers. We'll, you, we'll usually clear coat a top clear of coat dresser. those, yeah. And then if you like the way the wax feels, then you just wax right over the top of that clear coat. And that's that's always a yeah. good thing to do too. Cause that's what I gotta do to the kitchen table is I gotta I gotta We gotta put gator hide on it. Um the top of the kitchen table to protect it, yeah. Yep. That way it's totally impervious to spills and water. Yep. That's all I got. That is it. All right. Second coat this, and that way it matches up. But you can see the color difference in the just the one coat and the. Well, you got this done really fast. I'm really shocked, even with the tape down. I mean, you did a really good oh, job. Oh, I did do, I did do it fast. It's only twelve o'clock. I did good. Karen yeah. said, "Good to know. That's that's what my hubby keeps saying that he loves the way our cabinet feels with the wax." Yes, the wax is really good. I like the way the wax feels. Um, just buffing it up and stuff like, you know, yeah. And you can always reapply the wax, say, in a year from now, you know, you've used it up, you've dusted it, you've wiped it down, you know, just regular, yep. that kind of stuff. You It never hurts to reapply the wax just to give it um. And it's water-based, so it's not going to build up. Yeah, it's not going to, so, yeah. Um, it, it never hurts at all. And that wax that you got will last for a long time, a long time. Tina said, thanks so much for another great live. Have an thank awesome you. day. Thank Tina you. Thank you all so much. Said, for thank you. Excellent job. Um, hopping on and watching and painting with me today. I appreciate y'all all so much. Always enjoy watching you guys, Donna said. Yay. All right. That's it for today, guys. Uh, y'all have a wonderful weekend. Great day. Uh, hopefully, we'll see y'all Tuesday. Yep. See you Tuesday. And uh, other than that, y'all have a great day. Bye, y'all.